Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. This is gonna be a short, sad video. We're sitting in a 2016 Ford Edge with the two liter EcoBoost. The engine was uh, running a little funny, so they took it to the dealer. Next thing the customer knows, the dealer says, hey, you need a new engine. Now, if you are familiar with these engines, they do have a known issue. What we're gonna do is just confirm that yes, it does have this issue. Yes, it does need an engine, just as a second opinion. Let me swoop you around and show you the mileage on this thing for a 2016, so not that old, and the miles is under 100,000 miles. Let me show you. So right now we're only sitting at 82, almost 83,000 miles. The common issue these engines have is a crack in the side of the cylinder wall, causing an infiltration of coolant. So that was the dealer's diagnosis. Let me show you how you can confirm whether your engine has this issue or not. Right now I have the engine running. You can see the RPMs are stable. Now the customer does say that every once in a while the RPMs will fluctuate, but at the moment it is stable. We do not have a check engine light on. Uh, usually it would be up here. It's not on at the moment. Let's go ahead and pull codes just to see if anything is stored in memory. So we'll go ahead and read fault code, retrieve CMDTCs, and there are no current DTCs at the moment. So our first big clue to this issue is low coolant. We're not even uh, anything in the tank. Completely empty. Men should be up here, but we have nothing. Totally dry tank. So next thing we want to do is just check around to see if we can spot anything. Uh, is the radiator leaking? Is there any other reason for there to be no coolant other than it burning? Let's go under the vehicle. So same underneath. All you're looking for is a coolant leak anywhere else. So we're looking for an external leak. Look all around the radiator all around the radiator hoses. Is there any reason that our coolant bottle is leaking or low on coolant? And just look all around, water pump area, everywhere, turbo cooler lines everywhere. And there is no indication of a leak externally. Now there's no indication of an external leak. Now we can pump the system up, which we will in a moment, but a lot of times if there's been a leak for a while, you'll see the little crusties as the coolant dries. It leaves like a little crystallized crusty behind. Uh, we don't see that, nor do we see any puddles or drips or anything that would indicate an external coolant leak. Now again, we will pump up the system, pressurize it, but at the moment it does not look like there's an external leak. But the coolant's going somewhere, so let's check to see if there's an internal leak. So next we want to pull off our ignition coils, pull out our spark plugs. We'll get the camera set up, take a peek. This is just a little note as I took the radiator cap off because I wanted to top it off so I can pressurize the system and know that I have coolant or enough coolant in the system to do a thorough inspection. As soon as I pulled that cap off, our coolant level returned. So it's not as low as it first appeared to be. So just a little note. All right, we topped off our coolant bottle and now we have the system pressurized. We're just gonna let that sit while we pull our coils and plugs. That'll be enough time. Then we'll go ahead and just do another external visual real quick, just to see if we see any drips now that we have the system pressurized. And then this will also allow if there is a crack in the cylinder wall, now that it's pressurized, hopefully it'll bleed out into the cylinder. And then when we look at our camera, there'll be a puddle or some sort of moisture inside. So doing this now, while we do everything else, we'll give it time to leak wherever it's leaking. All right, we're gonna pull off our airbox tube first. On this yellow connector, you push up on that yellow piece and then down like that and it comes out. So I don't know if that'll show up in the camera, but this piece in the front goes up and then this little lip goes down. So that's out of the way. Same with this white one. You just pinch. There's a top and a bottom white axis. You pinch it, pull it, done. So that's out of the way. We have this little hose here. Just pull the clamp off. The hose should pop off just like that and it looks like a 13 millimeter here then a seven millimeter for our clamp that clamp there this clamp over here all right then we pop off our electrical connectors for our coils it's just this white tab gets pushed back and then the whole thing can get pushed down and pull so really simple white tab down or back and then that whole white tab can get pushed and then it'll lift up that little connector clip do that on all of them I believe those are seven mil, no, eight. Okay, all four. Let's pop our spark plugs loose.
So now with our spark plugs, sometimes you can tell if it's burning coolant. This one, it's a little ashy, but let's compare it to the others. Yeah, about the same amount. This one was a weird one coming out, but no, it looks okay. Actually looks a little better than the other two. And this one looks the same as the other three. So I'll take a picture of them with my phone and you can see what they look like. Okay, so out of all of those, cylinder number one was the hairiest. So we'll focus our bore scope down that one. And then cylinder number three was the cleanest. So we'll compare cylinder number one, cylinder number three. We wanna look really closely at the piston top and the valves. At the moment, our pressure didn't really drop maybe maybe a little but not as much as i would have hoped but if we can find moisture in there that that would be the best all right so you can purchase cheap ones on amazon that use your phone they hook up to bluetooth or wi-fi i'll post a link in the description this one is more professional the tip of it can move like that but they're a little pricier i'll, I'll still put a link in the description for this one but also for a cheaper one that should work just the same. So let's go ahead and turn it on. I'll screen share so you can see exactly what I'm looking at. Okay, here we go. Going in, cylinder number one. See that? How half of it is super clean. Now some of that could be the direct injection. So that's just the top of the cylinder. I think that's all that is in the middle there is the direct injection. That's its spot where it injects. So it's going to be a clean spot on the piston head. I don't see any moisture. Let's go down and take a look at the valves. Looks like we have two intakes. That's an exhaust valve. And the other exhaust valve. This one must be on the compression stroke. Everything's closed. There's the injector right there. You can also see, this is a really better shot of the ceiling point between the head gasket. I think that's all around, 360. I don't see any in here. So we'll go on to the next cylinder. Let's try cylinder number three. So it had the most difference in the plug. Okay, what's that? There we go. Is that what we're looking for? It's kind of moist. Okay, is that moisture? No, it could just be the way the piston head looks. Oh, it's pretty shiny. In that corner there. Okay, look. You see that on the cylinder wall? That line? Follow it up, see where it's coming from. Okay, so it actually looks like... It's coming from the top. not over there if you look on the piston right or the valve right there i wonder if that's where it's squirting in i don't see a crack in the cylinder wall so far it looks like it's the head so the crack doesn't necessarily have to be on the wall it can be on the top it looks like that's what this is the cylinder number three all that wetness so that confirms that cylinder number three is our smoking gun. And we are leaking coolant into the cylinder. Bummer. Well, that is the sad conclusion of this diagnosis. Let me show you the TSB that Ford has put out. That stands for Technical Service Bulletin. It's a bulletin that is meant for professional shops to help them uh, diagnose and resolve common issues 
with their vehicles. So let me run you through real quick what that TSB says, what vehicles this applies to, so you can see if you're within that uh, danger zone, that year range with this engine. So this is the TSB here. If you notice the issue, this is what we'll be focusing on. It says some 2015 to 2018 Edge and 2017 to 2019 Fusion MKZ Escape MKC vehicles equipped with the two liter EcoBoost. So those are the years, 2015 to 2018 Edge, 2017 to 2019 Fusion Escape MKZ with the two liter. It says engine may exhibit a low coolant level, white exhaust smoke or runs rough with or without the check engine light on. You may exhibit some of these trouble codes, but you may not, like in our case here. So this may be due to coolant intrusion in the cylinder. To correct the condition, follow the service procedure steps to replace the long block engine assembly. Let's scroll down. So these are the steps for diagnosis. Number two here. Number one applies to different vehicles, but here we are on the edge. Do you have the two liter EcoBoost? Pretty much is what they're asking. Yes, proceed to step three. Three, we want to pressurize the cooling system to about 20 PSI and hold it for five hours. Now we did not hold it that long. We may have held it only for about a half an hour, but they're saying five hours. Number four, did the coolant pressure drop more than four PSI in that five hours? Yes. Then we go in with the bore scope, remove the plugs, check out the cylinders. Is coolant present in the cylinder? Yes. Then we want to remove the engine, replace the long block. That's it. So this is a known issue. They have a TSB for it and how to diagnose it. Uh, relatively simple, straightforward procedures. All right, there you go. That's all I have on this. A simple diagnosis to an unfortunate common issue on these 2-liter EcoBoosts. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. See you on the next one.